Hello everybody, uh, welcome to this presentation on my work as a postdoctoral researcher in SSPC over the past two and a half years in the University of Limerick. The work is entitled Predictive Design of Pharmaceutical Co-Crystals and it was carried out as part of the modelling theme under the supervision of Professor Damien Thompson. So we use molecular modelling as a nanoscale lens in order to understand and hopefully engineer and predict the macroscale properties of uh, drug crystals, be that API, coformer or co-crystal, uh, and also at the industrial scale uh, level, which I'll talk about in the next slide. In terms of our specific modelling, uh, what we're good at is being very quantitative in our predictions of properties, so not just ranking crystals, but actually matching the physiochemical quantities that, that we can measure in the lab. Co-crystals are uh, crystals that allow us to improve the physiochemical properties of our drug products by combining our drug or our API molecule, uh, like the one you can see here on the right, with some kind of co-former molecule, like the crystal you can see here on the left, and when we combine those two molecules together and crystallize them as a co-crystal, uh, we can again change the structure property relationships in that crystal and thus the physiochemical and functional property. So here's an example of the project I mentioned on industrial scale processes. This is in collaboration with Gavin uh, Walker and Denise Croker uh, here in UL. And we looked at very simple binding energy calculations between excipients, uh, co-formers and API molecules and how that affected the stability of co-crystals in a ball milling process. So initially when they came to us they were seeing this stability order but our calculations revealed through seeing how strongly all the molecules binded together uh, which excipients actually inhibited co-crystallization from forming. So we determined that PEG as an excipient yielded the most stable co-crystals and they were able to adjust their processes in order to, uh, to observe that. And this is what our, our plans and our actual future plans are uh, for using density functional theory in the modeling theme. We've ticked number one in terms of our, our large scale processes and our molecular interactions. We've ticked uh, number two, as I've described, tracking properties through co-crystallization and seeing how they change and develop. And what we're working on now, number three, to finish off this project, is looking at how intramolecular interactions, but in the unit cell, uh, influence properties like dissolution and solubility. So to conclude, I'm just summarizing here what we have shown that our models can do um, and what they've demonstrated for co-crystallization and for drug crystals. In square brackets, I've shown the experimental techniques that our models uh, quantitatively correlate to, which is very exciting. So I will uh, leave this here for a couple of seconds for you to finish up. Uh, but thank you for listening, and I'm happy to answer any questions.